Hi and welcome back to Break 100 Golf, I'm John. You're gonna love today's video because I'm gonna go over the Garmin R10 and my experience with it for the first 15 months that I've owned it. The number one reason initially why I bought this is because I started simple and it was not expensive, $599. So initially I had this setup where I had the Spornia net, a basic mat, and then I streamed it through Chromecast to my TV with the Garmin Golf app. Now, if you're gonna be using the Garmin Golf app, because of the graphics and all that, it's not going to translate as well to a full-size golf sim, you know, with a 100 plus inch screen, all that good stuff. Uh, however, there's a lot of different software that you can use with the Garmin R10, and I currently use Awesome Golf and GS Pro, which is not supported, but I'll explain that here in just a bit. Now, that worked out just fine uh, in the beginning, but I really got tired of hitting balls into a net and there just wasn't any immersiveness and I decided to you know, build a full golf sim and I invested a couple thousand dollars initially with a cheap projector and then I just kept building on it. Got a better mat, got a better projector, so, you know, initially it cost me just maybe about $2,500 and then in the end it ended up costing me about $7,000 to build my golf sim. But through the whole process, the one constant was the Garmin R10. So what I liked about it is that there was no subscription and it did give you some of the higher end radar metrics that you may have to pay for a subscription with some of the other launch monitors, which are gonna be a lot more money. And while I would like to have another launch monitor that has a camera built in, things like that, it has served me just fine. And eventually I am going to upgrade my launch monitor, uh, probably to a flight scope with the uh, Pro package. I really am interested in that. But right now, we're gonna stick with the Garmin. So, I mean, I, I've tested it tens of thousands of times. It has its occasional disconnect. I had an issue where it kept disconnecting all the time with Awesome Golf and also with uh, GS Pro. And I almost gave up on it. And it turned out, all it was, was that my Bluetooth connector was just not working well in my three car garage and it just kept disconnecting. So I ended up buying a long range Bluetooth connector with an antenna for $15 on Amazon and that solved the problem. So it's certainly great for practice, uh, the Garmin and uh, it's plenty accurate enough and I can tell you that I took some golf lessons last year using Foresight and also TrackMan and my numbers were all around the same as far as my swing speed goes, which is a high-end data metric, uh, it, as far as you know, my launch angle and my spin rate, all that good stuff. All my club distances seem to be approximate, uh, very, very close, all three of those launch monitors. So it is pretty accurate. That's been you know, my experience with it. Now, uh, as far as chipping, chipping can be a little dicey. So if you're just chipping from 20 yards out, uh, that's not exactly chipping, but a longer chip, say 15 yards, it's gonna pick it up. But if you're six yards from the pin on the fringe of the green, it may not pick it up. It may take you two, three, four times uh, to get it to pick that up. And that seems to be a common thing. And what I usually do is I move it back on my mat closer uh, to where it's like about, I don't know, four and a half to five feet away from the launch monitor. And it seems to pick it up a little bit better or if I take a longer backswing, but that's not really conducive to your game. So it can create that's, that type of problem with chipping and you may have to do it a couple of times. I don't know how to solve it. Uh, I've seen some other launch monitors have the same issue though. So 
versatility, it's so versatile. There's so many different kinds of software. I've got other videos that describe that. I'm not gonna go into the software right now, but there's so many different options. And like I say, I'm using Awesome Golf and I'm using GS Pro. Now it works with GS Pro. It is not the best option to use with GS Pro. And the reason I say that is it is not supported. So if you contact Garmin saying you're needing help getting connected to GS Pro, it's not supported. If you contact GS Pro to help with the Garmin, it's not supported. They're not really gonna be able to help you with that. So there's a lot of people in the YouTube community that can help you and I have many videos connecting the GS Pro uh, software to the Garmin R10 and I have had some issues with that as well in the past, but I talk about it in my other videos what I've done to correct that, including running the software as an administrator solved another issue I had where it was disconnecting. And then also, as long as I use that Bluetooth adapter with the extended range and use the connector for GS Pro in administrator mode, it works perfectly. Portability, you know, I've used it outdoors, you know, it basically comes with a really nice box. It's small, lightweight. The battery life is tremendous. I have never had an issue with the battery whatsoever. You know, I, I've used it for three and a half hours um, in a session and it hasn't even come close, not even 50%. So the battery life is very, very good. Probably about seven hours, I would say, at least. And then as far as, um, you know, if you're a lefty or a righty, that, that, that's the other thing is, you know, if you have a launch monitor, like say the Bushnell or, or whatnot, which is, you know, one of the ones that I have my eye on, that's gonna be sitting right next to where you launch all of your shots. It, you, you can't just switch back and forth between righty and lefty. So if you have a friend or whatnot playing, it, it's not really gonna work. So having a launch monitor that sits behind, you know, like a Rapsodo or a flight scope or a Garmin, that's, that's a great device to use for that kind of situation. I don't have any friends that are lefty. Um, and, you know, I don't really think that it's gonna be a problem when I do eventually upgrade. So the other thing too is this, the software version has not been updated in a very long time. I've used it since February of 23, and I don't think it's updated even one time, which means all the bugs are out of it. I think it's version 4.3. Uh, so that's certainly a good thing. Uh, you know, you can use your own ball. Uh, preferably, uh, they'll want you to use the RCT balls, which give you a better spin rate, or you can put stickers on them. My problem with putting the stickers on them is you know, you really need to line that up so that you're not hitting that sticker. But the thing is, the sticky part of the sticker eventually gets all over the ball. Now that's hitting your screen. And I have a premium screen and I do not like that. So I, I don't use the stickers all that often, but when I do, I try to check it all the time and that's kind of annoying. And I don't wanna fork out the money for all the RCT balls because they're, they're expensive. You can use it with the net, like I said, certainly, you know, it works just fine like that if you don't want to build a complete golf sim setup, if you just want to get your data. But I don't think that hitting it into a net is going to help you all that much in the long run to improve your game without a target. That's at least what I found out. You may be different, you may be able to separate that. I just was not able to. And I learned that very quickly when I started taking golf lessons on the big screen with the foresight system. And I'm like, I have a target here and I'm able to dial my shots in rather than just I'm hitting it into a net. I have not, I have no idea what I'm, I'm hitting at until I look over here at the screen. So it just didn't work out for me. So I built a golf sim and I'm lucky enough to have the space to have been able to do that. So here are the launch monitor radar metrics, and this is mainly why I continue to use this because they don't require a subscription, and it basically has anything you need except for club face position for where you strike the ball. It's incredible that they have all these radar metrics, and some people will argue that the Garmin doesn't work. They just, you know, they've never used it before, but because it's $600, it can't possibly work. And I've had so many, you know, hate messages like, 
that doesn't work and they've never tested it. It does work and I've used it and you can find a lot of videos from really good YouTube channels that do golf simulation that have tested it against other launch monitors, high-end launch monitors, time, you know, seven to $10,000 launch monitors and it's pretty accurate. So you've got club head speed, club face angle, club path angle, angle of attack, ball speed, launch angle, launch direction, spin axis, spin rate, apex height, smash factor, carry distance, total distance, deviation distance. There is so much there and it has really helped me to improve my game. Now I contend that a golf simulator may not help you improve your game. I think that you need to have a golf coach to explain to you how to improve it or how to translate or interpret the data that you're given on this launch monitor to completely understand it. At least that's been my experience with getting better. You know, increasing my, I mean, when I first started swinging my golf club, I mean, I could only swing it at about 91 miles an hour because I was coming over the top. I had you know, no velocity whatsoever coming off that club head. You know, I could barely get it over 200 yards. And now I can swing up to 112 miles an hour uh, and I can get it up to, you know, 285, 290 yards uh, on my drives. And that's because of my golf coach, mainly, not specifically my golf simulator, okay? So it's great for fun and it's great to get better once you learn how to get better from a golf coach or from taking lessons or whatnot from a PGA professional, I believe. You may be able to do it, but I believe that having a golf coach is much better than just smashing balls into a net and using the Garmin R10. It's just over and over and over again and, and how are you really going to improve if somebody doesn't teach you how to improve. If you want to be able to putt, the Garmin is not really the best option for that, okay? Because you're going to need to set up some convoluted, you know, webcam setup and there's just so many things that you have to go through and there's a couple of guys that have done that. And also going back to, you know, the launch monitor, uh, outside of it being inexpensive, you are going to need more space. So this needs to sit about seven feet or so, minimum six and a half feet behind where you strike the ball. So if you have a small space, you know, as far as the length of it, that's gonna potentially be a problem. So if you have a smaller space, maybe a launch monitor, you know, like the Bushnell that, that sits, uh, or any of the other higher end launch monitors that are not overhead hanging, and don't sit behind that set next to where you strike your ball, that's gonna be a better option for you, but it's gonna cost more. And you may have to pay a subscription. Um, you know, it may cost you $8,000 uh, for a launch monitor without a subscription uh, that has all the high-end metrics and all that stuff. And, and I'm just not willing to pay that because I can build, anybody can build a pretty nice golf simulator for eight grand. Do I want one of those launch monitors like the Foresight? Yes, I absolutely do. Uh, however, I'm not willing to shell out the money or a continued subscription at this point until I start making money, real money, on YouTube. So, you know, again, with the putting, it's very difficult. You can use X putt, but again, that's another thing you're going to have to set up every single time. And I, I just, I don't think putting is fun with a golf sim, I wouldn't mind being able to do that, but only if I had a different launch monitor with a camera set up and all that good stuff. It seems like at least with my channel that people are mostly interested in GS Pro with the Garmin. So it's not supported. So just remember that, that you may have some issues that you can reach out to people like me that have hit over 30,000 balls with it, with GS Pro, you know, I've probably had over a hundred golf sim sessions in the last, you know, 15 months easily uh, with GS Pro for sure. So I can tell you 100% that it, it will work just fine, uh, but you need to watch some of the videos 
to prevent some of the bad things from happening and irritating you uh, with disconnects and whatnot and accuracy. And I have many videos with the Garmin and GS Pro as far as connecting it and using it with GS Pro. Something else that you really probably also need to understand with the Garmin is that you can get radar interference from a fan. So even with a projector, and I've seen where guys like uh, Joe Legowski, check out his channel. He has an amazing golf channel, uh, very technically sound um, channel. And he, he built a cage around his to prevent the interference from the Garmin. There's a couple guys that have uh, some videos showing you how to build these cages to prevent the Bluetooth interference um, with the Garmin. Interesting thing that happened to me. So just aesthetically, to make it nicer for my channel, I hung curtains and went from the ceiling to the floor. They're like, you know, I have 11 foot three inch ceiling. So I got 12 foot curtains that hang down and I just pull the curtain closed. And so it looks like a more enclosed space rather than sitting in the middle of my garage. As soon as I hung those curtains, the radar interference with this stopped, which I loved because if I even just turned a fan on in the garage, it wouldn't work. It would just kept shutting down off and on, off and on. If I wanted to use an electric heater, couldn't use an electric heater. So I ended up buying a kerosene heater to work in my garage because it's not a heated garage. So just understand that you could have that type of issue with radar interference. So there are, are deficiencies. You can hear me talking about them, but the good way outweighs the deficiencies with the Garmin R10. It's been so reliable once I worked out reasons that were really not its fault. You know, the radar interference. That's not the device's fault. The, uh, you know, disconnecting from GS Pro and Awesome Golf. It wasn't the device's fault. It was Bluetooth. So I wanted to blame the device. I wanted to give up on it, but I didn't. Or running the connector, which is, you know, for GS Pro is open API. So they allow you to use any launch monitor with their software. So the connector just wasn't working and it kept disconnecting. Well, it was because I had to run it as an administrator. And there are people out there, and I had a heck of a time. It took me weeks to figure it out. This is why I share this information with people because there's so many people out there and I've had, you know, 150,000 views on my channel since I started it last July. There's so many people that have asked me questions and then I answer the question and they get back to me and they said, thanks for helping me out with the Garmin, I, that fixed it, or thanks for helping me out with GS Pro or Awesome Golf or whatever it was. You know, I'm really proud to be able to help the, you know, the golf sim community with those type of questions and continue to do that. Well, that's gonna be about it for today's video. I certainly do appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit that like button and share with any of your friends that may be interested in the Garmin R10. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.